Hey, this is Bruce Cook, and this uh, is going to be possibly, it's going to be one of the last uh, gardening update videos of the uh, 2023 season. So, um, I seen our forecast projected there to be a couple nights um, <clears throat> in the next few days. Actually, like today's Monday, the forecast predicted that um, where I'm living in Georgia, the temperature is supposed to drop as low as 30 degrees at nighttime, both on Tuesday night and on Wednesday night. So um, I came out here to pick off uh, all the pods um, that I could that had some color to them. And of course the uh, ones that appeared to be fully ripened. So what I was doing was uh, just picking them off, uh, letting them finish <coughs> ripen in my room. And uh, uh, cause I know if, if it does get cold enough, the pods can actually go soft on the, uh, on the plants. And then you typically, uh, I wouldn't get uh, any further ripening from those pods afterwards. So, but uh, anyways, before I go into here, something I ended up discovering when I went to go in through my uh, door here in my little fenced in garden area, went to pull up on, so I have two things to keep this door shut. I got this bungee cord to keep the top of it, you know, uh, closed. Um, that was mainly for like when I'm in there. Um, I put that up there so because uh, we got well, we now have two dogs. We just uh, adopted a another uh, dog, so pit bull. She's actually mine. It's my first dog I've ever actually had. So and I named her Bella. So, um, but anyways, I have that up there um, for when I'm inside of the garden area, so the dog or dogs can't um, pull the door open. And then I have this uh, plant stake, and I put these uh, hooks on here so I can run the plant stake through. Well, what I noticed was the plant stake was being stubborn when I went to pull it up and out of those hooks. And uh, what do I end up discovering? So, the first thing I discover is, uh, and it was actually even more bent than this. I had to uh, bend it up back a little bit uh, so I could even pull it up and out. But my plant stake was bent, and I noticed the uh, hooks that I run the plant stake through were bent. So, these hooks are actually less bent right now than they were before. These were like flared completely out and twisted. Um, and I had to uh, bend them back. They were a lot worse. And, uh, and then what do I end up discovering? So it was something with considerable amount of strength that was trying to get in here. This wasn't just some fluke. Um, what do I notice in the bottom of my door? Right about, um, with it, uh, about the top first eight inches, you can see my door is bent. What that tells me is uh, something that was short like our new dog uh, grabbed a hold of this thing with its with her mouth and tried pulling this open and was yanking with uh, quite a bit of force. So it's a darn good thing that I uh, I had that in mind when I first uh, erected this thing just so our uh, dog Roxy, the black one over there that we've had for a couple years, just so she wouldn't do that. But I have not had Roxy uh, uh, try to get in here at all. And uh, this now happens for the first time um, when we got our new dog over there. She's a sweet dog. It's just, uh, you know, it, all I got to say is it's a good thing that I uh, built this the way I did. Because uh, every dog we've ever had here um, in the past have uh, always gone after my, uh, my plants. Well, they seem to be interested more in the containers and chewing them up than the plants. But they would often uh, destroy my plants in the process of doing that. But anyways, um, I did a little bit of picking for the past 10 minutes, and I'm not finished. I still have the ahi lemon drops and uh, my yellow or my purple ghost peppers to uh, pick. But uh, this is what I've picked so far. You're gonna see a lot of green um, in this uh, on the peppers in this bowl. But they should uh, have no problem finishing ripening in my bedroom. I'm just gonna put like a paper towel over them so dirt and stuff don't get on there. But uh, it's uh, too bad that uh, winter is already coming so soon, it seems, for me. Because uh, my two-star plants, uh, my red primatales and chocolate primatales, and my chocolate bootlas, I didn't get a whole lot of those um, this season. I did, uh, I mean, I did uh, send out a lot of them or whatever, and my plants did produce a lot. Uh, but uh, now I got tons of peppers still lingering on the plants. I mean, this thing's riddled with... These are red primatales and the chocolate primatales, but uh, since the temperature has been cooling down, everything's been slower to uh, ripen. But 
I do got quite a bit of peppers picked already of the other kind, so I'll just have to uh, be a little more limited on uh, using uh, the sauces I make from the uh, red and chocolate primatelles and chocolate bootlas. So, but, and it, um, yeah, I got uh, pretty much uh, most of the pods that uh, had color um, picked off, so... And I just uh, started getting uh, ripe pods on these um, Ricardo Ahi Largos. So I picked, I don't know, it was two or three of them off of this plant. Um, a couple of them were uh, fully ripened. And I've only even got to, uh, I've picked a couple off of this plant already so far. I ate one on video and then I gave one to my boss uh, for him to try. So uh, well, I guess I missed uh, one of the yellow scorpions. That can get tossed into, oh, there's a couple of them. I can get tossed into that bowl. I'm gonna toss them in there real quick so I don't walk, have to walk around with them. You know. But yeah, everything's uh, starting to wind down here. And that's too bad about my Carolina Reapers because I, these I collected the least of for myself. Uh, <laughs> I just, I've had uh, a lot of uh, pods on here for the past uh, more than a month and it's just been taking so darn long for these things to ripen. So. I mean, it's got some, uh, had, there was a couple of really nice looking pheno uh, types I found on here, but that and our, uh, Dragon's Breath, uh, this had quite a few on here I just, uh, picked off, and then, uh, I'm really hoping my peppers don't get soft, because I would like to get at least another couple of rounds of, uh, uh, fully ripened pods to pick off these things. I just got done picking off a bunch of, uh, yellow uh, loose for lemons. So, now, all of my, uh, green pods, um, if and when the, uh, freeze finally hits, and it does get cold to the point where the peppers go soft, I am going to be using all of the green pods. Uh, I might sell a bunch of them, but I'm gonna want to collect a bunch of them for myself. I'm gonna turn them into pepper powder. Um, because all my other peppers that I have collected, um, I'm going to be making sauces out of most of them. My, I ended up deciding on my chocolate scorpion peppers since I got so many of them. I have, uh, I'm already having to start another one gallon bag, freezer bag. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to be start putting them in a new bag. Um, I got so many of them and I like just putting these straight into my food. Like after the food's done cooking, I'll throw them, I'll chop them up and throw them in there. Um, I'm going to use them like that during the winter. I'm not going to turn those into a sauce. And I decided to do the same for the few Carolina Reapers. And I do got a bunch of Dragon's Breath peppers uh, saved. I'm just going to use those to throw into food. I'm not going to turn them into sauce because I just don't have enough, uh, enough of everything to justify turning everything into sauces. I really don't even know what I'm going to do with my Red Prima Tellies that I have saved. Because I probably literally have maybe 20 or less Red Prima Tellies. I might have like 30 of the uh, chocolate prima tallies saved. And uh, I'm definitely going to turn those into a sauce because I've never done it before. And uh, I might uh, thinking, I think I got enough Naga Moriches. These things ended up uh, doing a little better for me the second half of the season. In the beginning, um, they, were, uh, they weren't doing too well for me. I was hardly getting anything off of them. And then uh, just this last uh, like month, um, I was able to pick quite a few of these. So I probably have uh, uh, probably at least 40 or 50 of these peppers picked. I think the last time I said anything about my Nagamoriches, I think I said I had maybe 10. And it took like two, three months just for me to get 10 out of here. Other than, you know, what I shipped out when, uh, in those boxes of peppers I was selling online. But uh, suddenly uh, they turned around and I was getting quite a few. And I even just picked uh, probably at least 10 just now. And uh, my Red Ghost... Uh, so something else I am going to also do, a couple things I'm going to do different next year that I did, um, that I did not do this year. I did to some, I did to some of my plants was, uh, that blood and bone meal. That was something new I did this year and it allowed my plants to, uh, produce quite a bit. Well, the three plant, well, a couple of the plants that I had actually mixed it into the soil and the plants, uh, exploded with productivity right away. That was my dragon's breath and yellow scorpion and i did it with uh, some of my other ones it was some of the last plants that i had put out here i was able to mix it into the soil where a lot of these i ended up having to put on the surface of the soil in the containers so that's what i'm going to be doing next year i'm going to be mixing the uh, blood and bull meal in the soil um 
uh, as I transplant these. Um, and then also there's something new I'm going to try now because I want to see if it uh, prevents uh, my plants from losing their leaves because something funny was going on with a lot of my plants, especially the ones that are on uh, the front half. That's uh, It seemed like as the plants were growing and the roots were going through the bottom of my containers into the ground, it's like uh, I was trying to figure out, every, trying to think of every other reason why my plants might have been losing their leaves. I thought it was some kind of disease problem. Um, I think uh, at first it was, I was thinking it was because I had put extra nutrients into uh, the top of the soil on my reapers, um, yellow scorpions, and my dragon's breath. But uh, I, I ended up doing that with some of the other plants, and it didn't uh, cause problems with them when I ended up doing that. But the one thing uh, a lot of these plants have in common is uh, they all have roots that have grown through the bottom of the containers and dug themselves deep into the ground. And it, uh, So what I'm going to try next year... I mean, I could be wrong about all this, you know, about, uh, you know, all the things I'm trying to guess, you know, or why my plants were doing that. So next year I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put something underneath uh, all my containers. And I'm going to be trying to shoot for uh, three gallon containers um, for my plants next year as well. So there's uh, a few different reasons why I want to do that. So, I mean, one is, uh, so, you know, on days that I, uh, you know, when I'm working and I just don't have the energy to come out and water everything, it helps to have plants in bigger containers because that soil can retain the moisture for a little bit longer period of time before you have to water them. So that way uh, I don't water them in the morning and then come home from work at night to find the uh, soils all dry and the leaves are wilting. So, I mean, if the plants, if I can get them in three-gallon containers or larger, um, if it can at least hold them over for 24 hours uh, during the hottest parts of the summer, that would be great. I don't mind having to do it every single morning, but uh, I just don't like doing it in the morning and then find, uh, coming home at night from work and finding my plants, uh, some of my plants wilted because, you know, they were in small containers and the soil dried up too quick. And, uh, and I'm going to have uh, um, probably that, uh, I don't know what you call it, it's the, that mesh stuff you put on the ground uh, when you're doing like... Uh, um, in bed uh, uh, gardening, you'd put that uh, black mesh stuff on the ground where you've dug, and then you put you know your soil on top of it or whatever. So a raised bed or whatever, you know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have that on the ground underneath the plants to try to prevent the uh, roots from growing through uh, into the ground. Because I don't know if there's something uh, nasty in the ground, uh, especially it's in that area. It seems like it didn't affect my plants over here. It uh, seems like it really only affect the plants that were closer to the front. So it could be something else causing it. I don't know. But, uh, I mean, I'm just uh, trying to go by experience. You know, what I've been uh, observing this year, trying to eliminate um, possibilities of what was causing it. And uh, we'll try different things. I'm going to keep doing what did work for me this year. I'm just going to, you know, do some other things differently to try to get a uh, more productive season. Because it really didn't help that my plants uh, lost leaves. Like my yellow scorpions, if you've seen my... I uh, was watching my channel and watching my update videos in the beginning. These yellow scorpions and the dragon's breath peppers. I mean, these things were just exploding with productivity. I mean, I got... I, I've had probably a good... Uh, like five, six, seven hundred uh, peppers that came out of these... Uh, just these few plants right here. I mean, probably even more. Um, and then same with the uh, dragon's breath. So, I mean, I, I ended up having to sell boxes of just yellow scorpions by themselves and boxes of dragon's breath by themselves, um, you know, putting them up on eBay and selling them off of eBay just because, uh, I mean, there were so many and I needed the money anyways. But uh, anyways, that's my little update video. So when, uh, I'm sure the next, uh, I'll, I'll, I know I'll at least make a video when, uh, my plants are finally start wilting from the cold weather is I know the last three seasons it was typically my plants wouldn't literally die until like late November early December if I'm remembering that right because my plants have typically uh, been able to put up with 30 degree weather uh, 30 degree nights and uh, even the mid to high 20s uh, it was when it would get to the low 20s or below that when my plants would finally start dying 
So these things are pretty, uh, pretty adapted to the weather here, even when the temperature temperatures start dropping. So, but anyways, that's my update. Um, try to get uh, some more videos here. It's probably going to be more than a, uh, about a week from now before I can put up more videos. Uh, today's Monday. Uh, I was I actually thought I was going to be working today, but I ended up getting the day off. But we're doing uh, the indoor field cleaning at the paintball field I work at. And that takes, uh, typically it's uh, Sunday night through uh, Thursday night um, for us, like 10 to 12 hour days for us to get that clean, uh, that indoor field thoroughly cleaned. And I was there last night for it. You know, after I had worked at the uh, outdoor location, I had to go to the uh, indoor and uh, um, start cleaning Sunday night, you know, last night. But I'll be working tomorrow through uh, the end of the weekend. So uh, maybe next week uh, I'll have some more uh, content up. But until then, hope you all enjoyed the video, and I will catch you in the next one.